All right, hello and welcome to the Fresno City Toastmasters group. This is your current president, Joey Myers, and we are doing a little test run at a new physical space at a library. So we all may have some glitches that may come up for those watching on YouTube. You're wondering what the heck's going on, why this, that, and the other thing. But that's what we're doing right now. So we are working on a room, some media tech issue stuff. So if anything comes up, that's what's going on. So I want to direct you, if you have your agenda in front of you or on your screen in front of you, to the mission statement down in the lower left corner. So we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. And I always typically like to underline especially the supportive, positive learning experience there. For those watching that have never been or experienced a Toastmasters meeting. So first, before we get into the meeting itself, I want to take into account a couple business announcements. We do have a guest, we did at least, Bianca, so hopefully she'll be joining us shortly. She came on and then jumped off. The, uh, we have some a final opportunity for makeup officer training, and this will be, I guess, Saturday, August 6th, and that'll be from 8 to noon, 8 a.m. to noon on that day, so Saturday, August 6th, so that'll probably put us to two weeks from now or so, and we want to see if we can make that up, that training, at least get four officers on that, on that call, and I think we have five officers total, anyway, yeah. sharing, so that'll be all but one, hopefully we can get in on the training. Since we don't have any guests, Bianca's not on yet, we will kind of skip over the mentorship reminders, things like that. We do need to cover some roles today. We got a, a smaller, smaller group. So we have a general evaluator we we'll need to cover. Does anybody want to jump on that? I think we are. Chanel. Thank you, Chanel. We have Grammarian, we have the, the, the main three ones, Grammarian, Off Counter, Timer. Anybody want to jump in on those? I could do Grammarian. Grammarian, thank you. Heather, it's probably an easier one for you to do since you're on Zoom. I can do Off Counter. Danny's going to do Off Counter. I can do Off Counter. Right, yeah. Could, do we have our thing? Do we have our timer? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it doesn't actually time. Just... Right, I have a... <laughs> I have my watch. I can give you my watch, or I can do it. Okay. You want me to do it? Yeah. All right. I will take on the timer. I'm also working as Zoom master, although with a little less of the switching of the panes of the of the zooms. I think other than that, we got it all covered. So we got Heather. You're doing table topics still, so you're good with that. And Chanel is evaluating Danny's speech today. All right, I think with that, I will hand it back over to myself as the Toastmaster for our theme of the day to introduce, which is Dreaming Big. And I think any of those of you that join Toastmasters that start to start your journey on your the start of your journey, you're joining Toastmasters for a few different reasons. Some of the big ones are maybe you're going to be giving a big speech in front of a big, big crowd or a semi big crowd. And we've had members in our group that have had to give a speech in, a, in front of 400 people. And they join partly to get more relaxed in that kind of environment. We have people that are working that maybe want to ask for a raise and to be able to navigate the waters of a four, five, six, ten panel interview staff is pretty tough. So Toastmasters can really help in that regard as well. Or if you're like myself, when I first got in, I was trying to get better on video. And that was why I joined. So dreaming big for me meant being able to to be polished or somewhat polished on video as a coach. So you watching this might find yourself in one of those scenarios or maybe a deviation of one of those scenarios. And that will help you dream big and get at least the process to get the, the, the path to get to where you want to get. So that is dreaming big. And with that, I want to call up Miss Chanel West, our general evaluator of the day. Real quick, just as a check, Heather, can you still hear us okay? Is the Wi Fi connection pretty stable? We're not glitching out or anything. Cool, just wanted to check. I, since 
we all very much know the drill here. I will not spend too much time going into detail about my role today, but I am very excited to be evaluating Sydney's speech because I think it's been a while. How many, how many months has it been? Like it's been a year. It's been a year <laughs> since she's given a speech. So this is great. Super excited to hear it. Firstly, I will call up Heather. Can you please give us the word of the day? Sorry about that. I'm juggling three screens. So for the word of the day, I went along the same theme as dream, uh, but instead of the word dream, it is going to be the word vision. And specifically the definition I'm hoping to use for vision, because there are multiple, is a mental image of what the future will or could be like. So if you can try and fit that into your speech or table topics, anytime you have the opportunity to uh, talk. Uh, if you're able to fit that word in, I will go ahead and make sure that I note that and I will pass it back to our general evaluator for the day, Ms. Chanel. And we actually have a guest who just left in here. What was her name? Yeah, yeah. Okay. she just tried to log on earlier. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, uh, we're just going through our evaluator role. Okay. Word of the day, which is the word that we try to use throughout the meeting. Word vision. Joey, do you want to write it on the whiteboard? Yeah. Oh, Joey, it's right there. And then next, I'm going to call up Nathan to explain the role of all captures. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Dick Nathan. I'm going to be your odd counter today. I'm going to listen carefully to everybody speaking and write down crutch words just in an effort to make us better at the end of all of the report and tell us how we can make our sentences a little bit less crutchy. I'll tell you that. Thank you. I need to work on it today because last week I was really bad. <laughs> Next, I would like to call up Joey Myers to explain the role of timer for today. We will enjoy. To you, Chanel. I think what I'm going to do with the timer, I didn't grab our little thing, but what I'm going to do since Denny's going to be here, ooh, that might be tough one. Table topics. I'll grab the timer, but I do want to just at least give an idea of what we're going to be doing with the timer for those that are on timer. So there's an app that we can get on the App Store. Timer, Toastmaster Timer for you. Timer for TM. Timer the number four and the TM. Capital TM. So what we'll do is on the speeches, the speech, any speeches, five to seven minutes today. Right, mm -hmm. five to seven minutes. So on the on the app itself, it'll have green at five. So there'll be a big green circle. It'll be turn yellow at six, and then it'll turn red at seven. And then we'll have about thirty seconds or so to wrap up after seven minutes. When we do table topics, it will be a one to two minutes each. So the table topics will be one green at one. It'll be yellow at one thirty, and it'll be red at two minutes. And then Chanel will be giving Denny's evaluation of her speech, which will be a two to three minute evaluation, green at two, yellow at 2.30, and then red at three. So we'll figure out how to make sure that you guys can see it from there. There are cameras over there, so maybe I'll have that there, and then maybe this year might be better. We'll see. But that's basically what we'll be doing with the timer. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And then did you want to briefly explain the Zoom? I think you're down. Oh, yeah, Zoom, yeah. Well. So the Zoom side, now I'm physically here for Zoom. It's a lot easier sometimes when somebody's on, on line for the Zoom. But typically what we do are, are we record, record the meeting. If, if I'm at home, what I would do if I'm Zoom is I would make sure that we're getting main pain for whoever's speaking. And then what, what I like to do with our speech and evaluation is when the person's giving the evaluation is we have the speaker and the evaluator and the dual pain, which you can see. But we got hybrid meeting here, so we'll kind of go from there. But that's what the Zoom master will do is recording the meeting so that we can upload it to, to YouTube. Thank you, Joey. 
without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker for today, Danny. This is her first speech in a year. It is the second speech in her visionary communication pathway. She is starting to work on again. And I personally, I'm very excited about this speech because of the title. It's a provocative title, which for those of us who have been in Toastmasters for a while, we know is a good way to draw in attention before your speech even starts. Please welcome Denny to give her speech today titled, Too Hot to Handle. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm going to be very interested to know what colors you actually see on the other side of the screen with the green that's behind me. As we know, it's going to be about 109 today. Yes. On June 26, 1990, at Sky Harbor Airport in the big metropolis of Phoenix, Arizona, a high temperature was recorded of 122. Just for comparison's sake, we think we've got it hot here. When my husband and I moved here, people would come up to us and say, why would you move to Reedley? It's so hot here. Then I just look at them and I say, I'm from Arizona. I'm from Phoenix. They go, oh, okay. I want to give you a couple of little comparisons between Phoenix and the Central Valley. Because there are a lot of things that are very similar, a few things that are different. The first. There's a lot more rain here than Phoenix, believe it or not. In Phoenix, it rains maybe three days a year, maybe, and it's a little teeny tiny sprinkle. And this umbrella would only be used for shade in Phoenix because when it rained, we would run out and get wet. My husband is still frustrated with me because I will never, ever use an umbrella for rain. One of the great things that I love about living here in Central Valley is that I can wear light clothes, colorful clothes, short sleeves, shorts, whatever I want to wear. And everybody else can too. It's pretty casual. We don't have to be too formal here. We don't have to be high heels and stockings and all that that goes along with cold weather. And of course, water, water, water is always an issue here and there. Nothing happens without water in the desert. In Phoenix, there's about one pool for every three households. So you can imagine children learn to swim at a very young age, very young age, as in as soon as they can get in the water. It's a matter of safety and it's a matter of life and death. When I was first married, I actually went on a trip with my parents-in-law. We were in a swimming pool in Acapulco, of all places. We should have been in the ocean, but we were in a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And they were holding on to the edge. And I, I thought, well, come on, get out and swim. He said, no, we don't know how to swim. It was the first time at 21 years old that I had met somebody that didn't know how to swim. I thought everybody knew how to swim. In Phoenix, you learn to swim at a very young age because you have to. The neighbors got a pool, kids fall in, there's always tragedies that happen every summer, we're all well aware of that. We don't have as many uh, swimming pools here in Fresno, but I'm always very conscientious about water safety. We have the river in Reedley, and that's always an issue as well. There are canals. We depend on canal system in Phoenix and in here. I never drive along a canal at night because there's no edge, there's no protection. And if a car runs off, that's me being kind of freaked out, but <laughs> it's one of my things. 
no canal. We would play in the canal when I was growing up in Cuba. Stick your feet in, whatever, but but we knew how to swim. Still not safe, but you know. Another thing related to water is bugs. And there's a lot of similarities in the bugs that we have here in the US. When you're getting ready to wash dishes, have you noticed? If you look up, you'll often see a spider coming right down over your sink. If you haven't noticed that, look up next time you walk up to your sink. The water in the sink attracts them. They hang right over the sink. We also have black widows here and there. There isn't a day that I wake up in the summer that I don't shake out my shoes before I put my feet in them. And that's just a habit from growing up. Click my shoes together like this so that at least I shake up a spider if he's in there. Believe it or not, it's great to sweat. The heat makes us sweat. And I don't know why we try to cover it up, but it's the healthiest thing in the world. In Phoenix, we would go sit in a sauna even. You just get used to it, but it is very healthy. And I love that we have that kind of heat here. So sweating is a great thing. Of course, you gotta take a shower often, but that's the way it is. One of the things that I appreciate about being here that I didn't like about Phoenix is there are actually plants with leaves on them here. In Phoenix, it's cactus everywhere. When you landscape your yard, it's desert landscape, and you have to like desert landscape for you have a lot. It's a lot of sand, cactus. So I like that there are leaves on the trees here. And plants. Roses are the same now. Roses grow here and there. They love the heat. In Phoenix, you can see a tourist a mile away. You know why? They don't have a tan. <laughs> if you live in Phoenix, you automatically have a tan. You can't get around it. That's the way it is. And one last thing. The smell of the desert in the morning is the most beautiful smell there is. We don't have that here, but when you're, when you're on a trip crossing the desert, if you get up really early in the morning and get in your car to drive, there's this beautiful scent of the desert that is only out there in Arizona. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Denny. Mm -hmm. Great speech from Denny. It's been about a year since she's given her last one. And it's always great to see Denny speak. Denny's been here almost as long as I have at the Fresno City Toastmasters. She's one of our OGs, I think, of this club. So it's nice to hear Denny. She's usually doing our evaluations. She does a great job of, I think she's one of the, the, the queen evaluators, uh, speech evaluators on our, in, our, in our club these days. But thanks, Denny. And I think the other thing that I have a friend over in Georgia, they get a lot of wet heat, a lot of humidity. And he came over to, he was talking about how horrible the humidity is. And I, I told him, I know, I know. But then he came over to Vegas and saw how horrible the dry heat is. So both have, there's pros and cons to both, but there's big difference between dry heat and the wet heat. So thank you, Denny. With that, we only had one speech today. If we had two speeches, we would give our second one. But now we're going to move on to the table topics portion of our meeting, which is Miss Heather Davis, who is online with us on Zoom. So Heather, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Joey. A wonderful speech, Denny. I, I really enjoy listening to it. Uh, so for today, I have a couple different questions, all that line within the theme of dreams. So there are four that if any of them that you want to answer, please feel free to. And I'm, I just muted myself. <laughs> I am putting it in the chat. I know you guys are all in person, basically, but it is there. So the four questions that I have for you today 
is number one, what do you catch yourself daydreaming about? Number two, what is your dream vacation? Number three, what is your strangest, what is the strangest dream you have had? And number four, has there ever been a time when a dream did not live up to your expectations? So I'll go ahead and start and tell you uh, that my dream vacation is to take my family and just go to Hawaii. Truly, that has been a dream of mine. I think more so of just having the bil- ability to be able to take my family I have this dream that I hit the lottery and then I get to take everybody with me, my parents, in-laws, sisters, cousins, whoever wants to go, just let's go and all just relax by the ocean side, uh, sip on our pina coladas, go to luau's, just eat way more than we probably should eat and just really relax and enjoy ourselves. It's just It's almost to that point where you feel like you need a vacation from your vacation from all the time of just having uh, fun and making those memories and being active to just lounging by the pool. That is truly my dream vacation. My mom has always wanted to go to Hawaii, so I want to help make that dream of hers also happen. And I would love to hear about your dream vacations or nightmares or whatever other questions you would like to answer. So whoever wants to go first, um, great. If not, I'll just start picking some names. So. <laughs> let, let us get the timing under control. So there's the watch there. If then you wanted to, you know, how to reset. Oh, there we go. Let's make sure we got our timing all set up. And then if See, well, Heather, you already did yours, so I don't think it's really going to matter. We have our thing here, but in the future, maybe we'll do one, hold up a one. Somebody with the timers here in person, hold up a one for one minute, minute and a half, two minutes. Maybe that's what we'll do. Sounds well, good. Can you see me? I can see well, you. Use that if you want to shoot your yeah. phone. But for the person that's on online, if we're timing here, maybe something we can work on. And then whoever comes up, the questions are right here. I have the chat, so you can see the questions if you want. Anybody want to, Bianca, you don't have to jump up unless you want to. All right. I am Bianca. All right, so let's see. First question, what do you catch yourself daydreaming about? Definitely being out at the lake, especially when it's so, so warm outside. I was just talking to my friends about getting out to Huntington or somewhere where it's much cooler. Um, that and also just get at a houseboat in, by the ocean. I, that's that's a, definitely a dream that I, I have. I just, I love lounging. I love the ocean and the beach. Question two, what is your dream vacation? That's a tough one. I have traveled a lot. Uh, I would say... I would love to go to Iceland again, which I went two years, and that was a complete dream. So I wouldn't mind going back there. I would say I'd go somewhere where it's probably more of a challenge for me because I've traveled places where it has been very comfortable for me, like Latin America and a lot of countries that speak English. I'd probably go somewhere like Japan. Um, so. yeah. What is the strangest dream you had? I actually dreamt that I was a transformer one time that I was on with me and I transformed and everything. So I thought that that was really, really strange dream, but a really cool dream that I always tell everyone. Uh, last question, has there ever been a time when a dream did not live up to your expectations? I think we've all had those dreams where you're essentially crying in your, in your dream and you're like, what in the world? Why did I just have that dream? Why can I have, couldn't I had a more positive dream. So I would say not so much that I was expecting to dream about cool stuff, but after that bumblebee dream, I definitely am nowadays. <laughs> we always love when, when guests pop up here and their and their guests are not official yet. And beyond and there's a lot of creativity with table topics. You can you can do it any way you want. You can either answer one question, you can answer all of them like you did or a couple of them. But I think you did a great job because you didn't know all the questions, you forgot them all, and you just wrapped yeah. them off. That was pretty <laughs> impressive for a guest to do. <laughs> okay. 
truly wonderful, Bianca. I I have to say dreaming about transforming into transformer is different, but I bet that would be a cool, weird feeling. You know what I mean? Like some, some of those dreams are just really fun. So thank you for sharing. Uh, so Joey, you're already up there. Would you like to go? Want to answer one or all of them, whichever your heart desires? I think the biggest thing, one or two, see, what is your dream vacation? I think combination of the first two questions my my biggest my favorite dream vacation my favorite what do I catch myself daydreaming about is beach I've been doing a little bit of research recently on audio audio sounds and certain hertz and megahertz and things that we're all attuned to in the vibration the sound vibra vibration and, and they say that certain vibrations will enhance your they say their your pineal gland which is for creativity and they're just if you listen to the sounds they're just repetitive sounds but they have this way about us so many of us know white noise put a noise maker machine on could be the fan that's going it's just a repetitive mode a repetitive sound and for me the beach is that so the water coming up and down up and down up and back up and back and it's an interesting thing whenever we I take the family on vacation we go to we're actually going to be doing a, a last minute vacation to Thursday, Friday to Monterey. So we're going to be going to the beach, doing a lot of beach time with the kids. And it's amazing after having a hectic week, trying to take three days or five days worth of work and cram it into three, your brain's just racing, racing, racing. And it's an amazing thing when you get to the beach and you arrive and you, you smell the smells and you hear the sounds. And once you sit and you just, you just let yourself just let, let go, it's the sound of everything. It's almost like a meditation. And you sit there and you start to feel that anxiety or you feel the, the, the five days of work and three that you had to do. You start to feel that melt away a little bit. And then you take the shoes off. You take the socks off. Now you just let your feet get dirty in the sand and you'll walk out in the water and things like that. And so for me, I, what I kept myself dreaming, daydreaming about or dream vacation, anywhere that's close to the beach for me is, is something that I like to partake in. Heather? Thank you, Joey. I love that. I do find myself constantly thinking about the beach and I'm actually going this weekend. So I'm very excited. Uh, so thank you for sharing. Uh, it looks like we have two more people. So Chanel or Denny, whoever would like to go first. I'd love to hear. Yeah. Oh, I can't see. Okay. I just Great. see Chanel's face. <laughs> okay. I am not rolling my eyes at you, Heather. Yeah. I'm just rolling my eyes because I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable with my favorite yeah. topic today, mm -hmm. though not as vulnerable as if I was answering the question unless the previous night times we never come out because some of them have been very wild. Yeah. I'm going to answer the first question. What do I catch myself daydreaming about recently? At the age of 25, <laughs> I have actually my first boyfriend ever, first romantic relationship. And I, I will say for most of my life, I was one of those people who was a romantic skeptic. I think that some of it might come inherently from growing up in a culture that is very kind of idolizes romance, but not ever having romantic feelings myself. I was the person who looked at Disney movies and said, oh, follow your heart. That's such a bunch of trash. Like relationships are built on commitment and shared values, not feelings, none of that, not important. I still believe that relationships should be based a lot on shared values, but I will admit that I have been proven wrong about romantic feelings being complete hogwash. And Rather, I, I have found that they bring a, a vision of life for the future with somebody else. So if I'm admitting here today that that is something that I have caught myself daydreaming about a lot. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Chanel. I appreciate your, your open and your openness and your honesty and I love that for you and I, I really hope that turns into something and blossoms more for you. So it looks like we have one more person, Miss Denny Mason. Would you like to share? Okay. <laughs> and we 
can't see you, Heather, but it's up on the board here. We're still trying to work out the lighting. You have those questions up there? Yep. Right there. Picking out that garbage on it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about my dream vacation. Everyone else goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've always had people around me. I love having people around me. My husband and I have a, a great situation with each other. We haven't raised children together, and I, I attribute many successes to that fact. We each take separate vacations every year, mostly because we have dogs at home. And many times people to take care of as well. My husband just left on a vacation last week and he went to my sister and her husband's house <laughs> where he goes every year. Then he goes to his family in Vermont. My sister's in Boise, his family's in Vermont. And sometimes he also goes to a car show or an aviation show. He either flies or he gets away in the car. His vacation is my vacation. It's wonderful. And we understand that about each other because we spend all our time together. We live together, when we go to work, my shop is in the front, his shop is in the back. We're always together. I know exactly what time he'll be home for lunch and for dinner. He says track me on fine all the time. <laughs> it's a little different. So that's my ideal vacation. Then when I get to get away, it's his ideal vacation. Thank you. I love that. Thank you so much, Denny. And it cracks me up that you said the fact that, oh, we live together. Cause I once said that to my husband and he has never let that go. <laughs> like, oh babe, we live together. I'm like, okay, I know. <laughs> Can you still do this for me, please? <laughs> no. Well, thank you for sharing everybody. This was lovely table topic. So I'm going to pass it back to, I believe Joey for the day or uh, Chanel. But Chanel. End up giving it back to her anyway. So thank okay. you, Heather, for one of your favorite topics. And again, that's a another way that we do table topics is we can either post questions for all to see. So you get a little bit of a forewarning, you can answer those. It's a little bit better, especially for a guest like Bianca to come in and, and see the questions there and can have a, even though she went first after Heather. But we can also do it in a way that's where you don't know the question beforehand. And you volunteer first and then we ask a question and then you got to be able to deliver a speech. So thanks, thanks Heather for, for doing that. It's great, especially how it went with the theme. So with that, I will bring up Ms. Chanel West who gave the evaluation of Denny's speech today. So Chanel, come on up. Okay, today I get to evaluate Denny's speech. Um, I'm going to evaluate the master evaluator. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jenny, I think for not having given a speech for a year, you jumped back in really strong. You did a good job. I, I, I liked your introduction. I like how you gave very specific details. I think you said June 26, 1990, whatever the, the hottest temperature ever recorded. And details like that helped to draw in the listener right away at the beginning of the speech. I loved your visual aid of using an umbrella, which I think is something that you are consistently pretty good at bringing tangible objects while you're speaking. I think a couple of things to work on. Number one would be transitions, which, and I'll, I'll, I have a nuance to this. You did a really good job of not using filler words during the transitions. I think the pauses as you were looking at your note cards have been a little bit smoother, but I also understand that that comes with just having time to practice it and internalize the information, which we don't always have all of that time because we're very busy and we're doing the best that we can to be here. So I understand that. 
uh, to challenge yourself, I think one thing that you could do would be to maybe structure your, your it was, so it was a compare and contrast speech, and you made that very clear at the beginning between Fresno and Phoenix. And perhaps just an idea, you could structure some of that compare and contrast around a, uh, a, a sound bite or like a main idea. So, for example, you could say, like, today I'm going to show you that Fresno is, in fact, not the hottest place in the world, even though we all feel like it is by comparing it to Phoenix. Or you could say, I'm going to tell you, show you how Fresno is not the most extreme place to live, or et cetera. Something like that that maybe ties in the compare and contrast. That's an idea. You had great eye contact and very clear speech also. I I wasn't doing the eye contact exactly, but I didn't catch any serious filler words. And you held my attention. That's great. So job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And I am back and going to introduce our evaluation team. So firstly, I'm going to call Benny up to give her timer report if she is ready. Do you need a minute? I, a second? I, I think I more or less. Okay. Because I'm locked in. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I was doing. Joey was doing timer, yeah. but I was doing timer. All <laughs> we were having multiple things. I'm going to do off time too. Is that right with you? No, no, I was doing timer. We were kind of, we were together. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to go for high yeah. camera. I've got the other one you were doing. I've got the other one. This is going to be short and sweet. Bianca, thank you for getting up here and speaking for the first time. That was great. Have you been in Postescas before? I have in San Diego, but it's been quite some time. Okay, you have a lovely time. No, thank you. How long is those classes? Um, I think I was there for not too long, two or three months. Okay. Yeah. You do have a really nice time. Thank you. <laughs> I caught one um. I caught that. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Joey, you had so. Believe it or not, that's really all I caught today. So good job, everybody. And what timer stuff did you have, Danny? Oh, well, I can read out a few numbers. Let's see, Joey was at, on table topics. I don't know what I was on my speech, but on table topics, I had Heather at 1 30, Bianca at 1 30, Joey at 2 05, of course, and <laughs> Chanel at 1 30. And then, and then Denny, I had it, I think 615 or somewhere around that. Okay. For your speech. Okay. Good. Did you miss and then one? evaluation was. Oh, the evaluation that was 230. 230. We're going to do backwards. She, she started at three minutes and it was countdown. So you have to do the reverse of the actual time. Yeah, you're good. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you both for tag teaming. <laughs> Next, I will call up Heather to give us our scenario report. Thank you, Shanae. Well, I'll be honest, the last few times I've been grammarian, I myself have not said the word of the day. I did catch one person, and I believe that was you, Chanel, but I did not hear anybody else use the word vision or any variation of that. Um, was there anybody that did say it that I just happened to miss? I was thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> next time we'll make that vision come to life so thank you for trying and uh hopefully we'll we'll get more people to say the word of the day including myself uh next week so that's my report for today thank you i think that our meeting went really well today considering that it's our first time at a new location and we were actually able to get everything set up fairly quickly without too many hitches I think the only hitch is that the light that we, for some reason, are not turning off three times, even though we're staying here. I think that the fact that I used the word of the day and Joey didn't shows that it's a different <laughs> kind of day because I hardly ever use it. Maybe we're all a little thrown off. But good job, everybody. So we're going to report. So I'm going to call Joey back up to end our meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Chanel. Yeah, I blame the environment, the new environment. <laughs> what do they say? 
there was the everybody knows the Pavlov's dog experiment. They talk about how if you you ring a bell, you give a dog a treat, you ring a bell, you give a dog a treat, you ring a bell, you give a dog. Well, after a while, you can just ring the bell and you'll get the dog to start salivating. And I think the second part of that study that nobody talks about is that they tried to do the same thing, but take the dogs to a different location. And they were going to show some other scientists. I can't remember that the actual what what happened, but they took them into a different environment. The same dogs they were in the, the original experiment. They rung the bell, no salivation. <laughs> so what happened is they changed the environment and it changed the the cue. It didn't mean anything, so they had to get it back into that environment. So anyway, I blame the environment. <laughs> but I do like to talk as Chanel. Is it Chanel talked about on my table topics, my 205. Usually I'm I talk a little bit too much uh, on my table topics, and that's that's just that's just Joey. That's what happens. So I'll try to keep this short because I know we gotta I think jump out of here. We're a little early anyway, but you give me 13 minutes and I will talk for 13 <laughs> minutes. So what we like to do is we like to give rewards. I think everybody gets one on this one, especially Bianca coming in, doing the table topics. Yes, she answered all four questions, where she said she forgot the questions, came up and pretty much rattled those, those off, answers to those, and kept it within the two minutes, which was great. And I think our team here, Fresno City Toastmasters, at our new location, new environment, trying to get everything all set up. And we all came, and I think Chanel came, and then it came pretty early on time. And I came in maybe 10, 15 minutes after they did. And I think we got this all set up pretty well. So everybody gets a, a star. We got, we're bringing the stars back over there, sitting on the table. So I think that's great on the rewards. The next thing is flip your, flip your agenda over on the back. If you have a physical agenda, if you don't have a physical agenda, an online one, then you can scroll down the page a little bit. So next week, July 26th, we'll have to fill out our agenda here. So do we have anybody that would like to give a speech once again on the docket that's here? I would like to. Heather's saying no. <laughs> yeah, you can put me down. All right. And then if I can evaluate that, that would be pretty yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Evaluation, thank you. Toastmaster, mm -hmm. Heather, you gonna be here next week? Yeah, do you wanna be Toastmaster? Sure. I haven't been Toastmaster in a long time. Yeah. Other Toastmaster. I can pick up the general evaluator. Zoom. Table topics. That'd be the other big one. You want to double time? Danny, do you want to try? Sure. Table topics. Table topics, Danny. And then the other roles we can always fill out. The grammarian, not counter timer. So if you got a few more of our members are going to show up. We can we can throw them into those roles. So I think that's it. Other than that, we usually we'll take questions, comments, or criticisms from our from our normal peanut gallery, but from our guest peanut gallery. Beyond any any thoughts? I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I just right. wanted to ask: Are we secure in this location for a while? Because I'm thinking in terms of the flyers and any updates I'll post on Facebook and um, Instagram. I just want to make sure they have the correct address. So, are you guys foreseeing that we'll be there for a while? I think so. Okay, perfect. Because we have this room, and then the gentleman came in and told us that there was another room. Because I guess there's somebody coming in at one, so we got to get everything packed up. But the other room, he was saying, I don't think anybody's. So, so we have other rooms that we can, we can do with it now. So we have, as long as we stay on top of it, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Y'all good? How did you, did you just Google the Googles? Yeah, I've been wanting to get back into it for a while. And I, yeah, I think I, think I just Googled it. Mm -hmm. I found some of my closest locations to work. So. Okay. So, yeah. Any questions? I mean, you've been in this before, but it's been a while. So now we've kind of transitioned into the pathways, yeah. the online version. Uh, no, no questions in particular. I, I think that I want to do, I do want to bring some of my coworkers with me next time. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that's okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I work at an engineering firm. So, well, not, it's not just engineering, environmentalists. And so mm -hmm. I want to bring at least, hoping like four or five people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. We, we have chairs. We can always get the other room. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. I think the other one might be bigger. It's big. It's bigger. Okay. Right. So I'll, I'll shoot you an email and let you know if that's the case. Okay. Great. Yeah, yeah let us know. Oh, we can set cool. up for it. Cool. Uh, well, thanks, Bianca, for coming in as a guest today. And thanks to the team for 
set everything up. We'll have to take everything back down again, and we are going to end on time. It gives us about nine minutes to get everything all packed up. So Heather, thanks for Hi, being on the lines of the Zooms. Yeah, see you later. Bye. 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 Yeah. Yeah.